Yo, yo, yeah. Talk about it, huh? We gon' K Dub, K Dub, Red Dub, K Dub. This is Ratchet Trail 3000, up and coming artist from Shreveport, Louisiana, but he resides in St. Louis right now. Ratchet Trail, what is Stamp Life and how did it get started? Uh, stamp Life, you know, it was just a movement. I started in my neighborhood, you know, with my people. You know how your people be like, pound this, like, ah, oh, that was real, let me pound that. You know, you my dog or whatever. But for me, we would, we would be talking to me and my people. And I'd be like, man, stamp that. You know, my homie Automatic just got killed. And his thing was, everything was automatic. You ask him to dance, it would be automatic. You know, so me and him came up with it, it was like, stamp, automatic stamp. That what we, that's what we called it. Now he did, I gotta make sure that that live on, the automatic stamp. So Stamp Life was just a movement I started after saying a whole bunch of real shit to so bring all my people together and make sure y'all on the same page. We would just stamp it, make sure everybody agree, and we done with it. And when did that get started? Uh, it started like in 2010. When I was 17 years old, I had, you know, I had the city rocking with me, you know, people, you know, chasing women. I wasn't really focusing on the music at the time. I just was in the streets getting money, running with my team. And, uh, you know, we was just hiding stamped. Everything was stamped, you know. The shirts were stamped with the polo, you know. The pills were stamped, you know, with the with the Ninja Turtle, you know. Everything was stamped, you know. The Permethazine was stamped, you know. It says Permethazine, you know. The stamp is the, is the, is the logo. And uh, the label, you know, the, the, from real and fake, you know, Fugazi. Real and Fugazi, you know, they had the stamp, you know, it's real. So that's how you know. That's why I'm rocking with the stamp, you know. Just a movement, and that's the name of the label, you know, Stamp Life. On Boosie Head, you mentioned your grandma. Was she your biggest influence growing up? Yeah, my grandma, she the one who opened my eyes to this world, that how crazy it really was out here when you go outside. She used to tell me, she say, Ronnie, the devil out there like a roaring lion, you know, and uh, she went lying. I've been in jail about 10 times, you know. And, uh, and my grandma, sweetest lady I ever met, she believed in me. She always knew I was gonna do something big. And that's what I'm trying to do, shock the world, let them hear some real facts, you know, some real life stuff, some real poetry, you know. Talking about what it was like growing up in Louisiana, now I'm in St. Louis, you know. Trying to chase my dream, look out for my family, put us in a better position. You know, get a, get all my family off that Cooper Road, you know, move. Move them to, you know, to the suburbs with me, you know, one day when I get done. And what made you give up the streets? Well, I never really gave up the streets. I just moved out of the streets. I moved to St. Louis when I was 20 years old. My mama moved up here to start her little business, her home health care agency or whatever. And, uh, I just I just told her one day we need a new beginning and you know we need to start somewhere fresh. And I was in jail and she moved to St. Louis while I was in jail. I was in jail on some uh, charges for fighting and whatever, uh, battery, whatever, however you want to call that shit. I forgot the exact charge. It was way back in 2012. And she, you know, uh, I, what was the question? What made you give up the streets? I never gave him up. When my mama moved to St. Louis and I was in jail, she came and got me. So I had a new beginning, a fresh start. So I never moved, I, I never stopped the streets because I'm, I'm born in it, like my family is all I know. So somebody play with my family, they gonna have to see by me. So I never did leave the streets. I just moved away to try to do better in my life. But you know the streets, it's, the streets is what it is, the streets everywhere. You know, you can't never really leave the streets when you're from the streets. They follow you, you know. Yeah. And who's your favorite rapper out right now? My favorite rapper out right now? Shit. My favorite rapper when I was coming up, what I was listening to was Tupac, 
and number two was Boosie, number three, Soldier Slim, you know, uh, you know, people that's talking real facts and my real life stuff, you know, still I can relate to, you know. Shout out Master P too, he was one of the greats. How do you feel about the state of Louisiana and your city's murder rate? Uh, Louisiana? Man, I seen this before it even happened, man. Louisiana always was cursed and wicked, man. It's so much evil. Like, I seen, I seen my own family members betray me. And, you know, that I heard that support don't come from familiar faces. So with that being said, so I knew I had to get away just to get the real love that I, that I, that I deserve, you know, that I was given. When I was in Louisiana, man, I tried to show love to people and look out for them. They, I, I, hear through, I hear through the wind that they say I was a duck. How am a duck and you my people, you my family members, I'm looking out for you. Because we got the same blood pumping through our veins. And you telling people I'm a duck because I'm looking out for you. So I want my love back, but I can't get it back, you know. They talked about me and everything, and all I was doing was showing love to the unfortunate. You know, so... Louisiana just full of a lot of hate and, and, and fake love, so I just felt like I need to get some, move somewhere else and get on my stuff, you know, take this music, you know. Let me tell it. If you could change one thing in your life, what would you change? If I could change one thing, uh, I probably would have been focused in school, you know. You see me, I'm a healthy young man, so I probably would have, uh, Focus in school, I probably would be done with college right now. Shoot, man, I would just stay focused in school. So I probably be where I want to be. Now I probably, you know, I ain't gonna say if if was a fifth, but you know, I probably would just pay more attention in school and never would have been chasing those women, cause they they was fake anyway. You know, they gonna be there when I get there. You know, so. You know, I should have just been focused in school right now. I'm in school now trying to take care of business. So I probably would have just stayed focused in school. That's it. And why did you move from Shreveport, Louisiana to St. Louis? Why did I move from Shreveport, Louisiana to St. Louis? Um, like I told you, it was a lot of hate. You know, I started seeing, I started seeing the hate too much and, it's, and I started messing, started messing with my mind. Like my family turned on me, said I was crazy. You know, when you, when you real, they label you crazy. You know what I'm saying? Cause you might, cause you, go, cause you stand for something, you will lay your life down at any moment behind what you believe in. So if you would do that, you a crazy individual to most people anyway. So I knew I was crazy. So, you know, what was the question again? Why did you move from Shreveport, Louisiana to St. Louis? Because I wasn't getting the love I, that, that I was giving out to the world. I wasn't receiving it back. Nobody really showed me no love. And uh, I was I was being hurt by the people that I thought loved me, who I, who I was trying to make love me, who was my family member, who ones that were close to me that grew up with me. I wasn't getting the love back, so I went somewhere else. And you know, being from Louisiana, Living in St. Louis, you tell somebody you from Louisiana in St. Louis, it's just like telling somebody you from Wakanda, you hear me? So so that's big to me, you hear me? So they, it's, it's a lot of respect coming from the word Louisiana. You know, when you tell somebody you from Louisiana, you get a lot of respect and they, you know, and they already know about it and shit and it mean a lot to me. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to put on for my state and my city. I'm going to go somewhere else and do something positive. Because things I was doing in my neighborhood, going for bad, running with people that didn't love me, you know, no need for that. So I moved somewhere else. I had an opportunity to move away and do things the right way, try to get some money the legit way and chase my dreams. So I felt like it was a good move. And that's the reason I did move, because my mother moved up here. and. Uh, she came and got me when I got, uh, when I was released from CCC Cattle Correctional Center back in 2012, and I've been here since. You know, trying to uh, get some money to feed my son and put my son in a better position to chase his dreams, whatever you want to do. I just I moved out here to get some money 
the legit way, basically. Okay, is your mother still here? Yeah, she's still here. She's doing good. She she got a little business uh, taking off, you know, and she's doing the best she can. You know, we don't see eye to eye on everything like any other family members. But I love her because she's my mother. I love my daddy. You know, I love my family. But, you know, sometimes family can be snakes too, you know. Blood thick and water. But, you know, calm thick and blood. And, uh... You know, being betrayed and loved by the same person that ain't small. So take it and run with it. Okay, that that concludes our interview with Ratchet Trill from Shreveport, Louisiana, aka Ratchet City. Stay tuned for more interviews. Ratchet City blow. Yo, yo.